this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter. Today we are comparing the Rode VideoMic Go with the Rode VideoMic Pro. These are two insanely popular microphones and there are a few reviews out there on the two, comparing the two, but I wanted to put one together for you guys that is very thorough and will help you figure out whether you should go ahead and just buy the Video Mic Go or you should save up a little bit and pick up the Video Mic Pro. Now, I've been using the Video Mic Pro for years and years and years. I've been a longtime Video Mic user, so the actual original one, as well as the newer model, but I've loved the Pro because of the size and now I've been using the Go for a good while and feel that I am qualified to go ahead and compare these two and give you a good feel for which one might best suit your needs. First, let's talk about the physical differences because this does make a big difference. Let me go ahead and grab the Video Mic Go. And out of the gate, it's very different looking than the Video Mic Pro. First, there's that striking red color. It is a little longer than the Video Mic Go and the suspension system is different. And in my opinion, the suspension system is actually better. We have a right coat suspension system, which is one of the best in the world. There's almost no vibrations when you're moving. And even if you have this on the top of your camera and you're booking it around somewhere shooting a documentary, you're not gonna have any problems with the vibrations. On the VideoMic Pro, it uses rubber bands. I have found that over time, the rubber bands either break or they easily pop off. That said, Rode does give you extra rubber bands when you purchase the microphone. Something else I noticed about the mount is this particular setup with this right coat makes the actual microphone sit farther back when you compare it to the position on the hot shoe. So let me put this back on this camera over here. And right away you should be able to notice that the back of the microphone is pretty far back. So you couldn't actually put this up to your eye if you have a camera like these. These are mirrorless cameras. I can use the EVFs for video, which you can't do on DSLRs. So if you're on a DSLR, probably doesn't matter, but if you're using these and you wanna use the eyepiece, your face is most likely going to hit the back of the Video Mic Go, whereas on the Video Mic Pro, you can see here that the eyepiece is farther back than the back of the microphone. So something to keep in mind depending on how you shoot. If you use the display mostly, probably not gonna be a problem, but if you're constantly using the eyepiece and you wanna have the microphone on top of your camera for capturing B-roll or just casual sound recording, it might be a problem. Next, if we look on the back of the Video Mic Go, we can actually remove this cable, which is kind of cool because now you have a nice little small coiled uh, male to male eight inch cable, and then you can pack this all away nicely, switch out to a longer cable without using an extender, and uh, obviously you could also leave it on the microphone. On the VideoMic Pro, you have a fixed cable that cannot be removed. And then we get to one of the biggest differences between these two, and that is the battery. The Video Mic Go does not have a battery. You can literally just plug it straight into the camera and go, hence the name Video Mic Go. The idea with this microphone is that at any point, if it's on your camera and hooked up, you can whip it out and record and you have audio from a shotgun microphone. On the Video Mic Pro, there is a battery. It's a nine volt battery and it does last a very long time, but you do have to remember to turn it on. I'm sure some of you can relate. I forget to turn it on all the time. And uh, if you miss that, you miss that and your microphone isn't recording. The other sad thing is most cameras when they have a microphone plugged in, they automatically turn all other sources off. So if you have the microphone plugged in, but it's not turned on, you're getting no sound, which is a problem if you wanted to link your camera with other sound devices. So that's one thing is you can forget to turn the microphone on. The other problem is you forget to turn the microphone off. I've also done this on occasion where you're going and you're traveling somewhere, you've been shooting and you forget to flip the little switch on the back to turn it off and then your battery is dead the next day when you go out to shoot again. So that is something to keep in mind. Video mic go, no battery, can record instantly at any time. And on the Video Mic Pro, you have a battery and you have to remember to turn it on and off. But all that being said, having a microphone with a battery is great because you actually get cleaner sound. Because the microphone is being powered on the microphone, it's not being powered from the camera, you are going to get cleaner sound as we'll hear a little bit later. 
The other cool thing about the Video Mic Pro that is drastically different than the Video Mic Go is the switches on the back. On the back of the road, you have a high pass filter and a switch that lets you switch between negative 10 dB, zero, and plus 20 dB, which is huge. This is such a great feature because it means on DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, you can turn your input level on the camera really, really low, if not all the way down, which in turn gives you quieter noise, so less noise to, or no noise depending on your setup. Camera preamps aren't very good, so to have a microphone that can give a hot, really hot signal directly to the camera is a great, great thing. So when I use this microphone with cameras directly, I almost always have plus 20 dB turned on. We'll listen to it with all the different settings here in a second, but that is a massive, massive feature that the Video Mic Go does not have. Out of the gate, one of the big differences between these two microphones is the price. The Video Mic Go is around $80, $81 US, and then the Video Mic Pro is between $200 and $230, depending on where you pick it up. Now it's time to finally actually listen to these microphones and compare the two. This first setup, we're going to listen to the Rode Video Mic Go going straight to the camera, and then we're gonna listen to the Rode Video Mic Pro going to straight to the camera with all the filters turned off, and we're also going to have the Rode Video Mic Pro set to zero. So we're not cheating by giving the Pro the advantage. Both these are set to straight up zero. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. This is Kayla Pike, and you are watching DSLRVideoShooter.com. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, four. This is Kayla Pike with DSLRVideoShooter.com. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, four. Now I want to listen again to the Rode Video Mic Go, but this time we're gonna compare it to the Rode Video Mic Pro with the plus 20 dB. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, four. This is Kayla Pike, and you are watching DSLRVideoShooter.com. I have the Rode Video Mic Go set to plus 20, and it's actually so loud that I have to whisper at the same distance we had the other previous setup. So this is Kayla Pike, checking one, two, three, checking one, two, three. My camera is the GH4, so it only goes down to negative 12. So I wouldn't really even need to use the uh, plus 20 dB unless the microphone was too far away or farther away. So if you have a Canon DSLR, then this would be a great setup to use the plus 20 because that goes really, really low. Or if you have a microphone that starts really low and goes higher, this would be a great setup. Or if the microphone was farther away, Wow, that's still peaking, yikes. Um, then you could do that. But really you don't need to have it this loud. Let me switch it back. Ah, uh, there we go, so that's much better. We're at zero. It's just an amazing microphone. You can get this thing so freaking high just on the microphone. You don't need anything else, so great setup. So there you have it, that is the two microphones compared. At the end of the day though, it really depends on what you have to spend. If at all possible, I would recommend you go with the Video Mic Pro, but if you're looking for a microphone that you're mainly just gonna leave on your camera and run around and shoot, I think the Video Mic Go is a great option. Or if you do multi-camera shoots and you just want a microphone to give you reference audio, the Video Mic Go would be great. And obviously, if you can't afford the Pro, the Video Mic Go is going to do a good job. I would just recommend that you get the microphone as close to your subject as possible. So if that means using a mic stand like we did or some other method to get it just out of frame, you might need to zoom in and get a tighter shot of your subject so you can get the mic closer without being in frame. Those little tricks will get you much better audio no matter the microphone, but especially for the Video Mic Go. If you want to see more tutorials and gear reviews, check out dslrvideoshooter.com. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys on the website.